Let me demonstrate one more time why split toning in Lightroom is so awesome. We are going to turn this raw file into this final image. And if you want to follow along, as always, you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of this video. Now let's begin. What we want to do first is the basic exposure adjustments. This is an HDR image. So we first want to merge the HDR. Down here, you can see a bunch of different images, which we are going to use, starting with the first one of the sequence. I'm holding down the shift key and click on the last one in the HDR sequence. All in all, we are talking about five images down here. Then we want to right click on them, go to photo merge and choose HDR. Lightroom will generate a preview for you. You don't have to do much here. Just make sure to check auto align. Once this is done, just hit the merge button. We will end up with an image like this. Still didn't change much. I already have applied a little bit of cropping, getting rid of the upper part, just to make that lighthouse in the distance a little bigger. Now with the merging process out of the way, what we can do next is to do the basic adjustments to get the exposure right. The reason for me to shoot this as an HDR sequence is quite simple because they have some very deep shadows in the foreground against the very bright sky in the back. But since we have merged the HDR, we can now safely bring up the exposure to our liking and I'm going to raise it quite a bit. We don't have to worry about noise because of course this is an HDR image. Just like this, we have a little more detail in the foreground. The sky is now blown out as also indicated by the histogram. But don't worry, all we need to do is to bring down the highlights. And that's the magic of HDR. Wonderful. Still the darker areas are a bit too dark, so we want to bring up the shadows. I want to keep the foreground rather dark, so I don't want to raise them too much, but right about here looks good. There is underexposure still visible in this image right in the bottom corner. So what I want to do to fix that is to simply raise the blacks. Raising the blacks will lessen the contrast. But as I said many times, this also helps to create some kind of very soft look, which I personally love for my landscape images. Okay, now that the exposure is fixed, we can also apply a little bit of texture, giving this image some more detail this way. And I do think I want to slightly bring down the clarity to give this image a glowing appearance. And then what I want to do as well is to bring up the vibrance. Okay, looking pretty good so far. Now that we can see what's actually going on in this image, we can also work on the white balance. At the moment, this image is very, very blue. So I want to change that by bringing up the temperature to a more neutral point. Actually, I want to make it a little warmer just to make this sunset effect a little stronger, just like this. Okay, that looks good. Now, before jumping into the masking adjustments, you can already see some glowing orange line on the horizon. This is due to the HDR merging process because this area is just hard to handle for Lightroom and it kind of looks like chromatic aberration. So what we can do to Try and fix that. Let's head out of the basic tab, go into the lens corrections and choose remove chromatic aberration. This might help a little bit, but still not enough. So what I want to do as well is to go into the manual mode. Here I'm choosing the fringe color selector and with the eyedropper available, I'm clicking right here in the orange area. Now this will create some kind of halo effect around the edge which is something I don't want. So I want to reduce the amount right here and hopefully we can make it a little smaller, just like this. Maybe increase the amount to one and that should be fine enough. Now let's zoom out and you can see we kind of nicely fixed that chromatic aberration. With this out of the way, we can apply a little bit of masking. And I want to start with the sky. So let's create a sky selection. And with a simple sky mask, you can see we did select a little bit more than just the sky. To get a more precise edge, I'm going to click on those three dots, choose intersect mask width and choose select sky. And thus we're just cleaning up the edge. Now what I wanna do is to say subtract and choose a linear gradient. I'm going to take away a part from the bottom left sky because this is a warm, bright area, which I don't want to change. Instead, I want to make the upper right area darker by bringing down the exposure and thus just make the sky a little more dramatic. This is looking great. 
I'm going to add another linear gradient on top of it, make it a little smaller than the previous selection and again bring down the exposure. This is quite heavy, but I love how this looks on this image. So if you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. Next up, let's add a little bit of glow on the left side. I'm going to use a radial gradient for that. I'm going to make it nice and big like this, covering pretty much the brightest area of the sky and a little bit of the landscape in the foreground. Okay, now what I want to do to add glow is to bring up the blacks all the way. This already has a great effect on this image. However, I also want to bring down the dehaze very, very slightly. We don't want to overdo this, so be very careful with this. Okay, and we want to introduce more color to this part. So I'm going to bring up the temperature, making this area warmer. And at the same time, I'm also going to click on this box right here to introduce a specific color tone. So we set up the hue. Let's see, I want to go with something right here in the yellow range. And I also want to bring up the saturation all the way so the color is actually visible in this area. Okay, perfect. Then I do want to further improve the warmer tones in the sky. So I'm going to create a sky selection. And again, I only want to affect the left part. So I'm going to click on those three dots, choose intersect mask width and choose radial gradient. And then I'm going to create a radial gradient covering pretty much the left side like this. And in here, all I'm doing is to bring up the temperature again. I'm going to raise it quite a bit to make this effect more obvious. And I also want to bring up the tint and maybe even some saturation. Wonderful. Now I'm quite happy with the sky. Let's work on the foreground. I'm using another sky selection mask. To get the edge right, I'm going to use that trick from before, intersect mask with and choose select sky. But of course we want to affect the foreground, so I'm going to invert this mask by clicking on these three dots and choose invert. We do have a little bit of those clouds selected as well, so I'm going to say subtract and choose a linear gradient just to take off the top part of this selection like this. And in here, what I want to do to make the landscape a little brighter is to bring up the exposure just a little bit. And I'm also going to introduce some whites for more contrast. That looks perfect. Now, one more thing we want to do is I want to create a radial gradient for that puddle in the center, just like this. And in here, I'm simply raising the clarity just to make it pop. That looks great. Now at this point, I want to show you the before and after comparison before the masking adjustments, after the masking adjustments. So you can see masks already have a great impact on contrast and color of this image. And I'm always using masks to set up some kind of base image before I start working on the colors. And that's what's going to happen now. We are going to head out of the masking panel and next up we are going to work on the colors in the color mixer. Here, I just want to work on the saturation because I am not happy with a few things. First off, however, I want to bring up the blue saturation just to add some more punch to the sky. And then this part right here, again, the chromatic aberration around this edge is super, super distracting at this point for me. So we can try and fix that by bringing down the saturation of the warmer color tones. So let's drop orange and I'm going to drop it quite a bit because that's the main color of that chromatic aberration. And you can see it's pretty much gone. I also want to bring down the red tones just a bit and I do want to bring down the yellow tones. So this edge looks much, much better now. The problem is we are losing a lot of color in the sky as well. And at this point is where we are going to use split toning to add back some really good looking colors to this image. So let's collapse the color mixer panel and let's head right into the color grading tab, also known as split toning. I want to go into a little more detail here for people who are not familiar with this. Here we can choose between shadows, midtones, highlights and a global color wheel. Using these wheels, we can assign a specific color to a specific tonal range of this image. For sunset images like this, you usually have warm highlights and warm midtones, while the shadows can already be on the colder side. 
we want to emphasize this effect. So right here I'm on the highlights color wheel. Now how can we emphasize the colors of the highlights? That's really simple. We do have a hue and saturation slider. First we want to set up the hue to a warm color tone fitting the highlights of the image. I do want to go somewhere right here in the orange range. You can also see that indicated by this point on the color wheel. This doesn't change much at first. That's because the saturation is still set to zero. In order to take some effect on this image, we want to raise the saturation. And as we raise the saturation, this effect will get stronger and stronger, as you can see. Since I'm a very, very big fan of these intense, vibrant colors, I'm going to raise the saturation for the highlights only quite a bit like this. And you can immediately see once I turn off the split toning how this changed the sky completely. Now in order to keep some kind of color balance, we can also use the midtones and the shadows and assign certain colors to them. Let's work on the midtones. Here we do have multiple choices. What I like to do for this image is to add a little bit of warmth to the midtones. So again, I'm setting up the hue somewhere in a warm color range right here between yellow and red. Again, indicated by this point on the color wheel. Instead of bringing the saturation way up as I did with the highlights, I'm going to just at a tiny amount because you don't want to overdo it like this. Otherwise, we're losing all the color balance because there's just an orange tint over the whole image. So instead of a high amount of saturation, just use a lower subtle amount. I'm going with something like this. That looks perfect. Now for the shadows. Here we can further improve the color balance. The midtones and the highlights already are quite warm, but the shadows of this image are already cold. So I want to improve this effect by choosing a cold hue. So let's set it up to somewhere around here. And again, I'm using only a tiny amount, amount of saturation to not overdo this effect because otherwise it does look weird very, very fast. So that's not what we want. Let's go with something like this. Perfect. And just like that, we applied split toning to this image. This is the image without split toning and here it is applied. Wonderful. Now there are a few more sliders we can work on. For example, we have a luminance slider. This doesn't directly affect the colors. Instead, it will affect the luminance of the shadows, the midtones or the highlights, depending on which color wheel you are. Right now, we are working on the shadows. So if I bring down the luminance here, the shadows will get darker. And we can kind of use that to add a little more contrast to this image. If you would go into the midtones and raise the luminance of the midtones, the midtones would get brighter. And again, this is just a nice little way to add more contrast to your images. So I don't want to use the luminance for the midtones and the highlights. Instead, what else I want to show you is blending and balance. First, let's talk about balance. What this slider does is it balances the strength of the highlights against the shadows. What that means is if I bring down the balance, you can see the image will get colder since we have applied a cold color tone to the shadows. That's not what we want, however. I want to make this image a little warmer and what I can do to do that is to bring up the balance and tell Lightroom to bring a little more emphasis on the highlights this way. This might be a little bit too much, so let's turn it down a notch just like that. Okay, that looks great. And blending, I do think, is pretty much self-explaining. If I bring down the blending, the effect of the split toning on this image will be weaker. And of course, if I bring it up, the effect of the split toning will be stronger. So I usually don't use any blending and I want to reset it for this image as well. Now there's one more thing in the split toning which I didn't explain and that's the global color wheel. Again, pretty much self-explaining since this will just affect the colors in a global way. So let's say we want to make this image a little warmer. I'm going to bring up the hue one more time into a warm color range like this. And I want to bring up the saturation. This will apply this warm color tone on the image globally. So we don't want to raise it too much. We can just enhance those warmer colors a little bit by bringing up the saturation a notch. 
Okay, and here we have the image with the split toning applied. Before, after. Looks much better and as you can see, you can do some very, very creative things with split toning. Now I want to continue in the calibration tab. What I want to do here is I want to bring down uh, the blue primary hue a notch and I do want to bring up the saturation a bit. Then let's maybe also bring up the green saturation, but I'm quite happy with how this is looking. At this point, you can see a little bit of a bending right here in the sky. I personally don't have a problem with that. However, if you don't want to have this in your image, go into the color mixer and this color band mostly consists of purple and magenta tones. So, so what we can do to minimize this effect is to bring down the purple and magenta saturation. We could also work on the red tones a bit and just reduce the strength of it. But as I said, I don't have a problem with this in the sky, so I'm going to reset those settings. It's just good to know. Now, finally, what we want to do in Lightroom is to go into the details tab and we do want to apply some sharpening. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, and then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And that's the image after the Lightroom adjustments with this lovely split toning effect applied. So there's one more thing I want to do and that is to add some light to the lighthouse. And for this reason, I already have a second shot where we can clearly see the light. So I'm going to select both of these images and I'm going to right click on them, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. And in here, I'm going to take this image of the dark lighthouse, going to hit Ctrl A to select everything and I'm going to copy it by hitting Ctrl C. Let's go over to the base image and hit Ctrl V to place it in here. Then all we need to do is change the blending mode to lighten. Actually, let's go with screen. Now this will have an effect on more than just the lighthouse. So I'm going to create a black layer mask on this, holding down the Alt key, clicking on the layer mask. Now let's zoom in on the lighthouse, choose a white brush, and then I'm just going to paint in the light of the lighthouse. Actually, let's change the blending mode to lighten. Okay, this looks great. Now at this point, we could add some special effect. So I'm, so I'm using a new layer, change the blending mode to hard light. Again, grab the brush, bring down the brush opacity to around 8%, make it very, very soft. And I'm going to pick a color from the bright part of the sky right here. And what I'm doing now with this brush is I'm going to carefully paint in just a little glow above the edge. And I'm continuing my way all the way to the lighthouse here. Perfect, wonderful. And that's it for editing this image. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting as always. If you have questions left, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.